Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to show you a game called Tall Der Adventurer, um, which uh, translates as Va Valley of Adventure, the search for treasure in the Himalayas. And this is a game, I don't believe it has gotten an English printing, but maybe it has just in Europe. Um, it, it won an award, the uh, Austrian Game of the Year Award in 2006, which tells you how old it is. Um, and it could be tracked down, but you know it's not readily available in print. And this is a game designed by uh, the famous game designer Reiner Knizia, and it is an adaptation, actually a board game adaptation of a card game they made called Bucket Brigade. Um, this is also known as Honey Bears, um, in which players get a hand of cards and they collectively control a number of pawns as they move up a ladder. In this case, and then. By playing those cards, you advance your pawn, but at the end of the round, the number of cards that you have in your hand is going to determine your scoring. So if you spend cards to advance your pawn, you're going to reduce your scoring at the end of the round. That's how that works. Um, the board game adds a few embellishments to that uh, basic um, setup, so I'll take a moment to show you the, how it plays, and I'll come back to give you my final thoughts on it. So I've set out here the uh, components for um, Valley of Adventure, and... Uh, it only comes with uh, German rules, but you could print English rules off of uh, Board Game Geek. So the game is relatively simple. Each player is going to be dealt um, between 11 and 13 cards, depending on how many players are playing. And these cards are going to correspond with the colors of these four adventurer pawns, and they'll have a number of movement points on each. And then there are some that just are wild, and those will have also movement points on, on them as well. They'll just have all four adventurers pictured. So those are the only types of cards in the game. And on your turn, what you're going to do is you are going to play a card and then move an adventurer. That's as simple as it is. So, for example, you'll look at what colors you have. And, for example, if I play this uh, two red card, then I get to move the red pawn two cards. If I ever move on to a token... So this token here, it shows a card. Then I would just get to draw another card and add it to my hand. Um, some of the other tokens, this one here, will allow you to draw a gem, which will give you potential in-game scoring points that comes with these little plastic diamonds. Um, this one here, it allows you f another advancement of a character, three spaces. There's uh, varying quantities of that. This one, for example, is just one space. And you do that immediately after you've done your movement. Um, if you pick up another tile, great. Um, then there are ones like this one. This one gives you a gold coin. There's one that gives you three gold coins. That looks like that. So um, essentially you're just going to be you know, playing a card on your, your turn. That's it. And then uh, picking up any bonus tiles that you manage to get. And you'll notice the board is divided into uh, several sections. So here... There's a green section that has a minus one on it. This one has no um, coins on it. This one has uh, one coin, two coins. And the goal, all these paths, they lead to this, um, to this temple. This one has also three coins on it and a gem. So the first person to move any, any of these figures, and it's important to know that you're not really directly controlling any of these figures, you're all collectively um, controlling them. So although I move the red on my last turn, the next turn I could just play this, and then that would mean I get to move the blue three spaces. So collectively, you're all gonna be playing cards, all the players are gonna be playing cards to move all the adventurers. So let's say at the end of the round, um, you know, that adventure has gotten there, this one's gotten here, and the red one, you know, I play another red card, I play that one, it moves the red one into the, to the uh, temple. Immediately I'll get to claim this gem for being the person who ended the round. And then what will happen is that you'll look at your cards that you have remaining. So you've spent a lot of these cards over the course of the round. But you'll look at what cards you have remaining. Um, and then you'll score coins based on where the um, adventurers are. So at the end of the round, any brown cards that you have, which were the wild cards, those do not get to score you any points at all so you want to use those during the round but they are powerful because they allow you to move any adventurer which helps you grab these tiles um, any red cards that you have left so I presumably have spent a lot of my red cards getting this guy all the, all the way to the end you'll get three points for e or three coins for each of those so that'd be worth three coins the blue adventurer he's in this one space so any blue cards would be worth one point 
the green event where he's in this space. So the green, two green cards I would have, I'd lose a, a coin for each of those. And then uh, the yellow adventurer, he would, oh, I'm sorry, the green one would not lose anything. It's just uh, no points either way. The uh, yellow adventurer with the minus one, that those would be lose three coins because I have three cards left. So each player will do that. They will um, then carry over their scores to the next round. The uh, board here is two-sided, so let me just show you the other side of the board. It's uh, pretty similar. Um, it just adds one complication. Um, so you'll repopulate these uh, circle spaces with some of these tokens from the first round. All the adventurers will, will go back here, and now they're trying to get to this temple over here. But some of the spaces here will then get these bridge tokens. And the way that those work is that as soon as one adventurer moves over them, you're supposed to flip them over or just remove them um, to show that that path can no longer be taken. So only one person could go over each of these bridge tiles. Um, which will change the way that the race plays out. And here, you know, there's a huge minus one area. This is a zero area. Then this tiny plus one area, just these few stones here. And then over here is plus two and plus three. So um, after the uh, two rounds of the game, um, whoever has the highest total score will win. Your score is going to be any coins that you've collected during the game. Um, you'll compare the number of diamonds, these diamonds that you've collected over the course of the game. Um, the person with the most will get 12 points. The person with the uh, second most will get 6 points. In the case of a tie, the, the you add up the uh, 6 and the 12 points, so 18 points, and divide that among the number of tied players. And then um, whoever has the most points at the end of that will win. Okay, so that is uh, Taldur Adventurer, or like I said, the Valley of Adventure, the search for treasure in the Himalayas. And the game, as I noted before, won the uh, Family Game of the Year in Austria in 2006, and you can see why. It's really straightforward, and although it's adapted from an earlier card game, it does add a few embellishments. It adds that diamond uh, majority scoring, it adds those special tokens, it adds cards that move multiple spaces, um, which I don't think were present in uh, Bucket Brigade. Um, so it's a nice updating, similar to you know how Celtis updated Lost Cities. I would say that I probably prefer the uh, Lost Cities Celtis system to this. So if you can only have you know one of these two games, you might want to get Celtis. And the fact that it's out of print means that you know it would take some doing to get a copy of this, at least in the United States. So you might be fine with just you know the Bucket Brigade card game. But I do prefer this over the basic card game, um, just because of the th you know the light theme that's there um, and the fact that there's cumulative scoring over two rounds and those tiles do add a little bit of of strategy and choosing which pawn to move. You might not just choose the pawn that you have the most cards for because um, you might want to pick up one of those uh, tokens. Uh, so overall, I think that's a terrific, you know, light family game. Um, for The box says it's for ages 8 and up. Uh, I think that, you know, a younger player would be able to play it and play it pretty well because it is relatively simple. Uh, so, uh, an obscure Reiner Knizia game, but one that is worth trying if you get the chance. Um, this is uh, Taldia Adventurer. Thanks.